<clears throat> All right, we're back. And Greg, just because you're a punk, I still got my black on for you. <laughs> All right. So I promised you the administrative court. Yeah, and we're not going to talk about the Bar Association Court. I'm going to show you through this document and how Greg Newman dropped that child rape charge, how the state court is an administrative court. Whenever you go down to the criminal court, and then I'm going to play for you Greg Newman telling you to so stay tuned. <clears throat> All right, obviously, we have the right to due process of law. I've never seen any constitution anywhere that says that we have the right to due process of administration. If anybody ever finds that in a constitution, I'd be really interested in looking at it. I'm going to use this to show how everything, even criminal law, is administrative. It's all administrative. That's how they do whatever they wish to do. And that's why our society just appears so lawless. Let's get into it. Okay. Upon information and belief, that's important because they don't know any facts. On or about June 12, 2014, V.O., a minor, and her mother reported to the Henderson County Sheriff's Department that V.O. had been sexually assaulted by James Sapp, who Greg Newman let walk. Four days later, on June 16th of 2014, a detective assigned to the Sapp investigation interviewed V.O., V.O. is the 12-year-old girl that was raped. In that interview, V.O. described Sap as having certain distinctive markings in the area below his belly. And from what I understand from other evidence looking at the, looking at the case, is she described the freckles and... Uh, a scar next to his cock. I wonder how she knew that shit. On or about August 6, 2014, the court issued a search warrant authorizing the taking of photographs of Sapp's naked body. On or about August 6, 2014, Law enforcement executed a search warrant and took photographs of Sapp's naked body. All right. Here's your first clue, Sherlock. They got a search warrant. And I'm going to tell you what happened. Because here's what happened. She talked to the officer. The officer got the description of the body. The officer went in in front of a judge and told the judge what the girl had told her, or the officer, what the, I don't know if the officer was a man or a woman, but whatever the girl told the officer, the officer went in, got on the stand, and swore out a search warrant. There's only one problem with this, and this is what lets you know it's an administrative court, is because it's very clear in law that no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. How poetic for this particular situation. Because... The place to be searched was described pretty well by the 12-year-old girl. Huh. The only problem is, is that in law, the 12-year-old girl would have to go and swear out that warrant. She's the only one who has first-hand information of the facts. And 
Every single one of us have seen a video where, you know, you have attorneys in court and then somebody says, well, he said, she said, and the attorney goes, hearsay, objection. The officers don't have any firsthand knowledge of the facts. And they won't let you swear out a warrant because believe me, I've tried. That's how you know it's administrative because they just don't care. They just don't care and they just do whatever they want. All right, let's keep going. On September 3rd, 2014, Sapp was charged with rape of a child by an adult. A felony. I mean, really? Like, uh, you searched his body on the 6th and you, uh, you didn't charge him until almost a month later? You're just gonna let a child rapist stay out? for an extra month, but you know what? I bet if they had about four ounces of pot, they would have arrested on the same day. On or about September 5th, an employee of the district attorney's office called and spoke with Vio's mother to explain the court process and to provide notification of the court date. So right here, it's another interesting thing because back when we actually had law and Everybody kind of knew the law because, well, that was just kind of one of those things you did. Nobody would have to call the accuser and let them know what their rights were or how the process worked. I mean, it was pretty freaking simple. You walk into court, you say, that man put his prick in me. Arrest him. I'm going to swear this out before a jury, too. And you give them your evidence. And then they go arrest them. And then you bring them in and you tell the jury. You bring them in and he either says, I ain't do that. And then you tell the jury. Or he says, I, I, I did it. Please take it easy on me. That's the only two ways it works out in law. During that September 5th telephone call, Vio's mother stated that she planned to attend the September 23rd court date and every subsequent court date. All right, here's another reason you know it's an administrative court. It's because in an administrative court, the accuser doesn't have to show up. <laughs> what a joke. I mean, come on. We all know that if the plaintiff doesn't show up, there's no case. There's no case. But see... Because the district attorney, the state, has taken the jurisdiction away from the family where it lawfully belongs so that they can make sure that, that charges don't get dismissed because they're going to prosecute. <laughs> they, they got vested interest. All right. Then we, then we go back to... Uh, V.O. told defendant she wanted to be present at court hearings and at sentencing. Again, she would have to be if it was a court of law. There's just no way around it. You know, it's always funny how they use the law whenever they want to use the law. Whenever you don't show up, they're like, we're going to throw this out. Or we're going to issue a warrant. But when you wish to use the law, they, they seem to somehow mysteriously forget it. I, I don't get these people. On or about October 13, 2015, defendant signed a misdemeanor statement of charges charging Sapp with assault on a female. The victim identified in the misdemeanor statement of charges was VO. Okay, here's another reason why you absolutely know it's an administrative court is because he had four charges. He had, he had five charges. He had five charges. And then they knocked it down to one that he didn't even have. You can't do that in law. That means that they, they brought four fake charges 
into the public. Actually, five. They they just and they didn't even know what they had. And because they knew where to search, how to search, what it was going to look like, my guess is is that they knew what they were charging them with too. Okay. Here's how you know it's an administrative court. Okay, continuing further. Here's another reason you know it's an administrative court. Because when Greg Newman, the predator who allows child rapists to walk on the street and murderers to walk free, when he responded to the Bar Association about his statements of lies, he lied and told them that he talked to Vio's father. On the day that the plea occurred. And this is how you know that it's not a court of laws, because if it were a court of law, it would be Vio's father who would be prosecuting the claim. He would be prosecuting the claim. And if it were a court of law, well, nobody would have needed to get a grand jury. Nobody would have needed to get a grand jury. You see, all of these indictments were signed by the district attorney. And the district attorney went to a grand jury to get the indictments. I don't have time to explain that today. But a grand jury was never made for us, man. It was never made for me and you. It was made for them. I'll explain that later. But I will explain this. I'll explain where I get some of these ideas from. And just because it's you, Greg Newman, just because it's in North Carolina, I'm going to use North Carolina law to explain it. Last time, I was explaining some stuff. I went to Georgia law and showed the history of Georgia stuff. Now I'm going to use North Carolina law and show the history of North Carolina stuff. I get this out of your own code book in 1868. And this is, this is where they abolished law. Okay. 1868. And almost every state did it right after the Civil War. And they also made slavery outlawed right this is why you shouldn't trust what's legal because slavery was legal at one point in time and and slavery was made outlawed but that's also when all these states picked up a civil procedure a civil code and they started prisons almost every single state in the union started a prison system a department of corrections because that was the new slave build and look at America today. The distinction between actions at law and suits in equity and the forms of all such actions and suits shall be abolished. All law, all equity, gone by right here. And there shall be in this state but one form of action for the enforcement or protection of private rights or the redress of private wrongs, which shall be denominated a civil action. That's when they got rid of a common law action. And now all they'll let you do is have a civil action. But they won't let you know. I mean, it, it's pretty crazy. They didn't start this off right off the bat. And only a man can go in and perform law. But only if the Bar Association allows them to. 
I've seen it happen. But only if the Bar Association allows them to. And that's where it's messed up. And every action prosecuted by the people of the state as a party against a person charged with a public offense shall be termed a criminal action. Well, this is what they wrote. This is what the legislature wrote in a statement at the top of the book. But we go down to the very first action. And the way it describes an action is it says actions. An action is an ordinary proceeding in a court of justice by which a party prosecutes another party for the enforcement or protection of a right, the redress or prevention of a wrong, or the punishment of a public offense. You see, they were so sloppy and so fast, they didn't change that first definition. And you can clearly tell that it's saying a party prosecutes another. And the first two examples are clearly civil actions. And the last example is clearly a criminal action. You see, way back in the day, you would have to prosecute your own criminal actions. They just didn't have enough attorneys. And who cared about you anyway? Today, they take it all over. You want to know why? Because they wish to administrate it. They wish to administrate it. And then, of course, everything else is basically going to, uh, to a civil action or a criminal action the way that they, they describe it today. Everything after that point. But you can still read it in case law. You can still observe it if you have enough logic to get through all their crap. Now, the last time I ended a video, I ended it with, uh, with accuse and victim, where, you know, accuse was more powerful than a charge, and victim was a living sacrifice of an animal to a supreme deity. And I was talking about administer and minister. So let me give you some words that describe administer. Manage, control, rule, direct, regulate. Hmm. Let me give you some words that, uh, that define minister, inferior, servant, assistant. See, one word is there to serve you, and the other word is there to rule you. And I'm not a professing Christian. I've said this before. But I will say, the Bible is really interesting with its wording. Because God never tells anybody, go to administer people, ever. Christ never goes and administers people. Whenever the Bible is talking about God sending someone to somewhere, he always says, go minister, go minister to my people. Whenever Christ is walking around, it's always, I'm going to minister to the people, or I'm going to allow the women to minister me. There's never administer. There's never administer. And this is what I talk about when I say we, as people, got to learn to follow ministers and quit voting to be administered. That's what I mean. Because if we just follow ministers, it'll work out naturally. That's what natural law is. Anyways, I can hear my phone blowing up. 
Greg Newman, you suck. So that's why criminal courts are administrative. Peace. Uh, you said there was a jury trial in the way. That's not true. No, we had so many jury trials going uh, during that time. That's not true. I, I again, was relying on memory. Uh, it was superior court, but administrative court, not uh, jury trials. We, I just finished a jury trial in Polk County. We were preparing for another term. We, we had a lot of uh, jury trials in all three of our counties, and so... Uh, I just sort of had jury trials on the mind, I guess, but uh, it was administrative court, not not a jury trial. You're right. At any rate, there was no jury trial in the way. That's correct. It was administrative superior, not not jury trial superior. That's right. And you said our file shows that the mother never returned our call. Your file doesn't show anything with respect to that. Well, the file does not show that. Uh, the file doesn't show that I made the call. The file doesn't show that she called back. I had... Um, that's you. What, what you told the state bar was that the file shows that the mother never returned our call. So there, I was, we, right. we were assuming there'd be some documentation in the file that the call was not returned, and there was right. nothing I knew, in there. I knew, I knew uh, from the file before that there were there were um, notes uh, there inside the file, and I, uh, yeah, I was remembering that maybe there was some notation made there, but I was incorrect. You're right. But she hadn't looked at the file. We're answering this. I, I don't, you know, I don't think I did, Mr. Murphy. I think you're right. I don't think that I did. So uh, you got a.